our group uh, decided to kind of create a, a sort of informal uh, usability lab. And uh, our uh, scenario was to see installing a minion, how hard could it be? Next slide. So yeah, so our goal was to uh, observe and evaluate user experience with OpenNMS, and we picked the installing a minion as, um, as a sort of um, rel relatively um, contained task that people could do. They didn't have to install OpenNMS Horizon or anything like that, and that allowed us to uh, gather our data collection within sort of an hour time frame. Um, we wanted to see how different users uh, would, uh, with different levels of skill, would approach the task, and uh, then um, determine ways to improve user experience depending on what we discovered. Next slide. So our scenario was that our subjects uh, worked for a company running OpenNMS Horizon, um, and we wanted them to install, install and configure a minion at a remote location. Uh, we gave the subject a document that had all the configuration information and the graphic that you can see there as well, the diagram, uh, to, so they could visualize what they were doing. And they also had access to a root shell terminal uh, to the device uh, where they would be able to install a minion. Next slide. Um, I want to uh, thank all our volunteers. Uh, we had 10 volunteers, um, and we really appreciate that they took part. It was, it was an excellent um, uh, excellent group of people and, and a diverse group of people. We had eight OpenNMS employees, two NANT employees, um, and uh, a, a range of experience uh, with OpenNMS or and Linux. And um, the spectrum that we have there um, just did, shows the, the different experience levels that people identified um, of themselves. We sent out a survey to say, do you, how experienced do you think you are with OpenNMS and with um, Linux commands? Uh, next slide. Our methodology was um, when in evaluating our data, we had three main tasks that we were evaluating, finding the installation documentation, installing and configuring the minion, and then finding the minion in the OpenNMS Horizon UI. Um, the volunteer shared the experience during the exercise, um, and we also recorded the session, so we got some, some audio to hear what their experience was. Um, in a more formal usability testing lab, we would obviously have uh, um, different tools that we could use. Um, this was this was very informal, so we had to kind of go with what we had here. Okay, next slide. So step one, finding the installation documentation. Um, with strategies we saw our volunteers use were to Google install Min Minion Open NMS, uh, to look for the documentation on the website, and uh, some users were aware of docs.openNMS.org. Uh, and they went there. We had one user who actually went to .com and ended up with our um, our sort of sandbox docs, uh, ended up in Helm and uh, was not sure why they were there. Now that's just uh, an oversight on our part. We didn't realize that someone would Google that. Um, but uh, generally people were successful with those various um, um, strategies, uh, but different levels of success. Uh, next uh, slide. Um, something we observed, uh, I, I mentioned that going to docs.openNMS.org was generally successful, um, but two users chose to look at the Minion documentation, and we discovered that was version 19, and at, now that we're at 26, um, the installing the Minion is, is not in that documentation, it's actually in the installation guide, so that caused some confusion. Um, once that everyone was in the right document, um, it was difficult to find the actual uh, steps for installing the minion. Um, the table of contents wasn't clear that the topic was installing the minion. Um, and then uh, one user developer was very creative, wasn't sure of the um, uh, the version. I wanted to determine that they were using the correct version of the documentation, um, but ended up uh, going into open and mess rest and looking for the rest endpoint. We were very impressed with uh, that clever and creative uh, <laughs> creative way of looking for things, but obviously most of our users wouldn't be able to do that. Um, time isn't, it wasn't just about time because uh, our, the exercise for us was to observe how people do things, but it is a bit of a guideline for how easy uh, or difficult the task was. And our fastest time was three minutes to find the documentation. Slowest time was 20 and the average time was five minutes. And just take the next uh, uh, slide. I believe we'll share a video, just a little encapsulation of what we saw our, our, uh, our volunteers do. This is not, no, the cool right thing. Installation guide for, okay. I think it's for Horizon, not for a minion. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there 
anything on that page which tells you about instead of installing a minion? I see min set up minion with config file. Is that what we have? Yeah, no. I'm gonna go to our box page and look at the minion stuff. Exactly. So I click on minion because I assume that since it's called or since it's called minion, I can click on that. It might be some sort of configuration document. I look for documentation for OpenNMS itself. I, I know to click on it. Since I have familiarity yeah. with the site a little bit already, it kind of like I kind of figured if I just click on that and then I could get to it, you know. Oh, so is the mini documentation in the uh, OpenNMS documentation now? They might go looking for help on the, on the. So I don't want to install OpenNMS. So I'm going to install a minion. Probably no search on our website for minion. I don't know. It's yeah, like, I pull up a bunch of blogs and stuff. Oh my. There's no oh, documentation yeah. in the documentation tab. It's a lot of steps to get from. I need to do this thing to where do I go look to what set? How do I know it's even in, you know, this document? Okay, we'll go to the next slide. Oh, it's mad. <laughs> so some of the pain points we saw uh, in in uh, in a lot for a lot of the volunteers. Um, the Minion documentation is old. I, I mentioned that earlier. Um, it wasn't obvious that the Minion installation was in the installation guide, although once people realized that, they, they were able to locate the installation guide. Um, the table of contents heading for the Minion installation is monitor isolated location with Minion. It really describes what a Minion does. It doesn't describe that um, you, <laughs> mean, mean Girls gift. thanks, so yes. <laughs> um, it uh, describes what a minion does, not that that section shows you how to install. And that's the table of contents heading. Once you're scrolling through, as we saw some of our users doing, they eventually found the Red Hat, uh, the RHEL um, uh, installation for the minion. Um, there's a wall of text. One of our, our volunteers did comment that there's just a lot of text. It was hard to figure out um, which were the procedures for installing Horizon and which were for installing the minion. And several people mentioned the inconsistent typography. Um, they didn't know what they were supposed to um, uh, uh, substitute or not substitute when they were using commands once they started doing the installation and configuration. Next slide. So now we're gonna look at installing and configuring a minion. Next slide. Um, our observations when we saw this um, were that um, people were following the steps in the documentation. Uh, users with technical knowledge, including developers, still did face issues. We thought they might have an easier time. Um, some were not as fast as those with less technical knowledge, um, and there were very, we're not sure the various reasons for that. Um, it wasn't always, as I mentioned before, with the typography, it wasn't always clear what text needed to be replaced and what you just cut and paste wholesale and, and put into the command shell. Uh, only two volunteers, both of whom were developers, knew to skip some of the extra information. We found there were several parts in the documentation where it would give a command, you input these commands, and then there'd be, or you could do this, um, or maybe now you want to try this. Um, and a lot of people got uh, stumbled on that simply because they, they had to read through it. They weren't sure, oh, is this something I need to do, or is this something I... I, I can do if I want to. And I think actually um, I have that quote, that was one of the developers. I would have liked to see typography that is consistent for what one uses verbatim and what one has to replace. I'm sorry, that's a different quote, my, my bad. And uh, we did have someone who said that they should call Alejandro. <laughs> um, and uh, errors, and there were also some errors in the documentation which created confusion and meant users could not keep complete tasks. Um, Dustin's presentation was great because um, if, if uh, what he did can help us with that, um, I think that'll improve some of those uh, command issues with the docs. The specific example was to, con 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 to test connectivity, um, you were supposed to uh, type minion colon ping, um, but that command does not work anymore. And uh, every single one of our volunteers encountered that, I believe, except one who, um, who was familiar with, with that change. Um, and it wasn't clear what the command was that you should replace it with in it, its OpenNMS health check. Um, next slide. Oh, is our, this is our video of, I guess, people uh, configuring and installing. RSA, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. What, oh, Minion, it says Minion. I did it. Okay, step four. 
configure Minion to communicate with OpenNMS Horizon. Now, again, is, can I do any of this in the UI? Or do I have nope. to do? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it would be so nice to have the UI, but the, the, the OpenMS Cloud Portal is pretty much the UI for it. Yeah, no, no, that and that that makes sense. Those those things would have been nice in a general sort of way. Now, on, on your technical manual, it's all there for an administrator to figure out. Um, but if for somebody coming in the first time, um, a general breakdown of the process uh, would have been a little bit more helpful. Hold on a second. This is where I kind of get lost a little bit. Yeah, exactly. It's twice there, right? But do I want to run this or do I run? I don't think I run the whole thing. I think I just run this. Yeah, right, right. This is the prompt. This looks so, like a prompt. That's why. Yeah, I'm... exactly. Yeah. If you're not a Linux guy, I would be struggling. Without without Ronnie, I'd be struggling. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I understand what's going on. Um, I'm pretty good at a DOS command line or a PowerShell right, right. command line. But when it comes to Linux, I'm a little bit ignorant. Have you worked with the shell before? Um, I mean, during some of the work I did with the flows investigation and other things. Yeah. But not, not otherwise, no. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you did. That's so we did all this stuff, and that's it was it was just that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just that. It's just that. And you're like, man, what a pain in the rear for all just that. <laughs> yeah, so as we can see um, in the last clip, that was the exercise. That was all that people had to type in, enter into the um, into the shell to get the minion up and running. And um, several people we showed that to made similar comment uh, that, wow, it's a lot of work to do. Um, to uh, to get there. Um, some of the issues were mainly in the copy and paste. And I believe Dustin had also mentioned that in his presentation. Um, you couldn't just copy and paste because the command prompt is there. So you had to do one at a time, which, which was quite difficult. Uh, one of our people, uh, the, uh, the Nant person, one of the Nant people who you saw in that video, um, copied over to a text pad or notepad so that uh, he could um, address some of those issues with uh, adding uh, uh, usernames and passwords and so on. Um, so some of the pain points, uh, we, you know, as we said, configuration was more difficult than installation. It took longer, longer than the installation. Um, and I mentioned the inability to cut and paste was an issue. Um, errors in the documentation, duplication of commands did cause confusion and frustration. Uh, and I've listed the specific ones there. We can, you could look at after if you'd like. And uh, again, the typography was, was an issue. Um, the next uh, slide uh, just shows the some of the typography issues, just to so people can visualize it. So as you see, the first one, uh, is the uh, red text is actually part of the command. It gets copied verbatim. In our second example, the red text is what needs to be replaced with uh, the parameters that we had given them. And then in the third example, it says minion, minion. Um, there's no indication that you need to replace minion, minion. Um, for with a username and password, and, and several users, uh, even more experienced users, weren't one hundred percent sure. They they figured they did, but it was that that hesitation of oh, do I need to copy both? Am I am I or am I replacing them with the username and password you gave us? Uh, next uh, slide. Uh, and then the final example, uh, final step was finding a minion in OpenNMS UI. Next slide. Um, most people, their strategy, well, of course, log into the UI. Some of them hovered along the top menu to see what was in the drop downs. A few people tried searching for minion or location. And our next slide would be a video, I think, showing, oh no, observations. Uh, no one knew where to look for the minion. It was not intuitive that it was under nodes. One user clicked on alarms and got magically taken to the minion. So that was kind of neat to see. Uh, and uh, technically experienced users did have a lot of difficulty. Our fastest time was 50 seconds to um, to uh, find the minion. Uh, slowest time was five minutes, and the average time was 2.3 minutes. And uh, we'll show our video. Okay, now find your minion in the OpenMS Web UI. Uh, I've only looked at uh, I think the topology page here. There was a topology page somewhere. All right, can I just? Uh... Okay, search. Okay. Minion. Super obvious, right? Nope. 
You found it. Go to web UI and then you go to a location. Oh, oh goodness. Uh, yeah. uh, our location <laughs> isn't this thing. Nodes. Oops. Okay. Search. Can I search for location? Nodes, nodes, system. Oh, hang on. But what do they call this thing again? It's called New Remote Office One. Oh, okay. Well, doesn't let me view it. That's like a. What does this do? Oh, there are nodes in it. Oh, okay. That's nodes under that location. Okay, but. Where is location view on its own? Um, it's not gonna be here. It's gotta be in there something like this. Uh, nodes, nodes. Okay, I can see nodes in a location, but is there like another yeah. view for locations? <laughs> okay. This is it. Oh, there we go. This is it. Okay. Oh, here it is. That's there, yeah, and and, yep. and it's up and running. Yeah, that's the menu we have added. Yeah. Where? Uh, let me let me see here. Uh, I could search. Try, right, yeah, sure. Nope. Uh, help uh, now. Um, <laughs> I know that's me. What's this? Oh, I did that before. Oh, but it, is it an is it a node? <laughs> I don't know. I would I would not know. Um, Is it's it? under nodes. It's under nodes. Okay, that's what I was thinking, but I was like, no, it has to be different. But this is it, right? So that's basically the minion. Okay, Yay. cool. Yay! We did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and our, our next slide. Oh, it's angry again. That's okay. So installing Minion, how hard could it be? Um, the fastest total time uh, was 17 minutes um, to, to go from beginning to, to end. Um, and uh, the slowest time was 58 minutes. Uh, average time was 37 minutes. And of course, this is very informal. As I said earlier, we only had 10 people uh, trying it. Um, and again, it's not a, just about the time. Uh, that does indicate that there was some, some pain in, in doing the particular uh, task, but we were really interested in seeing how people approach and how their attitudes and their experience made them uh, perform these various tasks. Um, times for technically experienced subjects did range from 17 minutes to 41 minutes. So it's not just a case of um, people who didn't know uh, how to use the command shell or things like that. Uh, next slide. And so next steps, um, we considered updating documentation, obviously, to address some of those issues. We could consider changes to the installation process to provide more feedback uh, to the installer. That's something several people mentioned, even our technical users is like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's connected because it wasn't clear. There wasn't a message until, until very near the end. Um, and uh, possibly uh, implementing usability testing with product development going forward, um, keeping our users in mind uh, because each subject brings their own set of skills and assumptions. Uh, it would be great to have a more formal UX testing process so that we get in the minds of users, identify the pain points, and allow us to make changes that improve our user experience. And I think one more slide. Think like a user. Uh, User-centric approach is important in all aspects of our product development, from design to implementation to promotion and beyond. As we saw, some, someone had an issue with the website, not being able to find the docs there, and just some, some inconsistency uh, in, in how things were displayed there. So. If we always keep our users in mind, um, we can build a better product and keep them happy and uh, maybe uh, attract more. Thank you. Awesome, thanks team, that was great. Yeah, it's good to see uh, <laughs> how people uh, tend to work through that. Um, that's what happens when uh, when I write the docs. Um, that's what we get, so. Oh no, it's not just the docs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. As somebody else said not too long ago, the thing about testing is it also makes us look bad. <laughs> well, and and this exercise was not to make anyone look bad. No, no, was, I totally understand. Yeah, it was purely just to see how how people would uh, would uh, react to the different things that they were they, that were thrown at them. Yeah, I think it's pretty revealing and brings up yeah a lot of good points of things we can you know improve and make a point to pay attention to going forward. So yeah, that's great. Um, Cool. Uh, so next up.